எஸ் சார் இல்ல இந்த இந்த மைக் மியூட் பண்ணுங்க ஆ ரைட் ஆ குட் மார்னிங் டு ஆல் எஸ் சார் எஸ் எஸ்டிம்ட் ரீஜனல் டைரக்டர் ஆ தி எஸ்டிம்ட் ரிசோர்ஸ் पर्सन प्रोफेसर ரிஜியாஞ்சலி மேடம் फ्रॉम காந்திகிராம் ரூரல் இன்ஸ்டிடியூட் டீம் டு யுனிவர்சிட்டி இந்துக்கள் and uh, all our esteemed staff members coordinators from the study centers and uh, our esteemed students those joining this uh, uh, webinar in connection with the national startup day uh, being observed on 16th uh, uh, but we are celebrating uh, today uh, in, on the topic scope and opportunities for startups in food processing sector uh, this is one of the exclusive event, event uh, for the benefit of the students because igno being a national level open university uh, putting all the efforts for uh, skill development uh, and uh, the curriculum now uh, being revised especially in the undergraduate programs with the four year multidisciplinary multi skill oriented curriculum is being introduced by igno in line with the national education policy 2020 there are several efforts uh, are uh, taken place uh, for the benefit of the students being a student of uh, distance mode or online mode uh, in this system you have to utilize these kind of opportunities uh, being delivered because this is we are conducting a uh, virtual mode you can participate exclusively from your doorstep uh, without any movement uh, from your place so these are the convenient steps we are taking uh, for the benefit of the students uh, the resource person is concerned uh, she is one of the eminent stalwart in the field of uh, the food and nutrition she has been uh, having a very rich and vast experience of research and uh, uh, she has been engaged in the various high level committees also uh, Gandhigram Rural Institute, one of the uh, central level institution in this uh, uh, southern, southern part of uh, uh, this country. This institution exclusively uh, promotes the skill development by undertaking various activities. They are being the regional coordination institute also for the Unnad Bharat Abhya. And various skill development uh, other initiatives also taken place by this institution for the benefit of the rural community. uh upliftment so we are happy to invite our madam uh, for delivering this uh, uh, the important topic uh, during this uh, webinar uh, as part of the uh, igno uh, we are uh, uh, happy and welcome you madam now i request the regional director uh, to speak uh, uh, these special words uh, for uh, inaugurating this uh, uh, webinar then after the resource person will take up the lecture so very uh, good morning to all uh, morning sir uh, uh, respected uh, resource person for this uh, very important event uh, professor ss vijayanjali uh, head and head professor and head department of uh, home sciences gandhigram rural institute all our colleagues from uh, regional center coordinators from different study centers of uh, igno the faculties from the school of uh, schools of uh, headquarters invited participants as our own students and other colleagues i have a great privilege uh, to have this kind of uh, webinar on this uh, occasion of uh, national startup day celebrations of uh, Uh, 16th of this month it is an important event that uh, national start of day that is uh, startups you all know uh, uh, training the students for self uh, uh, employment or starting some uh, new uh, industrial uh, efforts etc so as a part of uh, this national education policy you all know a uh, government of india is uh, coming out with lot of new innovative ideas and also in the curriculum of nep 
almost 30 to 40 percent is uh, incorporated for uh, employment enhancing employability through different uh, sources so on these uh, auspicious uh, uh, efforts of uh, training the youth we are uh, having uh, this event today and of course uh, the topic which has been uh, uh, identified is uh, very uh, important food processing it is one of the one of the uh, recent uh, picking up uh, industry uh, giving lot of uh, employment opportunities because uh, of uh, the lifestyle of uh, the people society towards the food habits etc is uh, making number of uh, uh, innovative ideas in this sector so we are very happy to have our uh, resource person uh, professor ss prasianjali uh, madam on for as a, uh, a resource person of uh, this event having her own experience of uh, teaching and uh, guiding the students of uh, different uh, uh, academic programs like uh, dnhe our own uh, programs like dnhe or msc dsfm her uh, deliberations her uh, ideas of uh, start up in this uh, uh, food processing sector uh, making the topic of scope and opportunities in this uh, food processing sector is uh, definitely is going to be of uh, beneficial to our uh, students and other participants uh, uh, our igno being the national open university largest open universities across the country across the world you can say having more than 35 lakh students and uh, uh, 25 21 different uh, schools of studies uh, having a big network of uh, study centers regional centers and schools etc uh, this uh, kind of uh, program reaches out a large group of uh, uh, target benefiting them to think on uh, the specific topic so uh, uh, i personally feel this is an important uh, uh, webinar and uh, uh, i i thank the uh, resource person also associating with the gandhi gram rural institute of course the igno is we are having our own st our study center also with this institute uh, we have our uh, practical so msc dsfm and other food and nutrition programs are being uh, uh, students are being trained uh, from this uh, uh, gandhi gram rural institute this such kind of uh, collaborative uh, mechanism which uh, uh, igno is uh, following so thank you madam for coming sparing your valuable time uh, i wish this event would be of uh, great success and benefiting to a uh, larger number of uh, 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 part, uh, beneficial, uh, participants thank you thank you very much thank you thank you very much sir i am honored and uh, it's my privilege to uh, be a part of uh, igno program today uh, at the outset, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers, uh, uh, Regional Director, uh, Dr. Shanmugam sir, and uh, Assistant Regional Director, Dr. Anbalagan sir, for giving me this wonderful opportunity to address uh, the uh, students <coughs> on... Uh, sir, uh, shall I share the PowerPoint, sir? Ah, yes, yes. Sir. One minute. One minute. Yeah. Uh, you can present. Yeah. Maheshwari? Yes, ma'am. Ah. Sharma. Yes, <clears throat> without any delay, we'll uh, just get into the topic. <clears throat> and uh, the today's uh, topic, it is on uh, uh, scope and opportunities for uh, startups in food processing sector. <clears throat> and uh, as uh, Sir has uh, uh, said, this uh, startup event that is based on the 
startup event this program has been initiated and uh, it is so this uh, event which has been done with uh, by uh, with the background of startup uh, india initiative which is inaugurated by uh, uh, our uh, uh, Honorable Prime Minister uh, uh, Narendra Modi ji on January 16th uh, in 2016 and it is officially designated as National Startup Day in 2022 which is on January 16th and this year it is the it marks the eighth anniversary of the Startup uh, India program and this has been expanded from around 400 startups in 2016 to over uh, uh, 1.18 one eight lakh startups so far and uh, is the slides visible sir no madam no ah uh, maheshwari says just a second Mageshwari. Ah, yes. So this is the eighth anniversary of the Startup India program, which has been expanded uh, from around 400 startups uh, to more than one lakh uh, startups so far. And uh, this uh, and today's uh, event it is on uh, food processing sector, where uh, the agricultural products has to be transformed into food products, which is to be fit for consumption. Uh, by means of different processing uh, methods so that uh, which will be uh, edible for or uh, ready for consumption so this food processing industry forms a major part of india's economy owing to the variety of food products that the country produce for further process of consumption the next one And uh, when we see the current state of food processing sector in our country, uh, India's food processing sector, it is the largest one in the world and uh, it is expected to reach nearly uh, 535 billion US dollars by 2526, that is 2025 to 26. And this uh, preference for the processed food, it is uh, by means of two trends in the, uh, in the world, it is uh, by the means of uh, increasing demand for convenience and uh, emphasis on health and wellness. The convenience food, which is helpful in the health and well well-being of a community or an individual. So the demand for food continues and it is expected to increase by 56%. That is uh, with the growth of world population and it uh, is expected to reach by 9.7 billion people by 2050. So the current state is increasing, the production is there and uh, the need for uh, <coughs> food is in demand and it will be increasing wide. And the market statics uh, the statistics which shows that the, the, the expected uh, 
this sector this food processing sector ex expected to generate nearly 9 million jobs by 2024 that is by this year and uh, this indian uh, food industry is expanding at the uh, level of uh, compound annual growth rate at, of 11% in the food processing sector uh, which accounts for 32% of the total food industry especially this uh, indian food industry and uh, this represent one of the most accurate ways to calculate and uh, determine the returns of the individual assets so by 2030 india's annual uh, household consumption is expected to triple making india the fifth largest consumer in the world so the even though the production is there the processing techniques which will be making the food products to be available it is tripling by in the age of 2030 and uh, so when we see this um, opportunities in the food processing sector the india's is a la uh, largest producer of spices milk and pulses in the world and second largest producer of tea sugar can uh, wheat fruits and vegetables and it is also the uh, high in uh, dairy pro products which is the ranks by 46 in terms of export itself and uh, <coughs> the vegetable uh, production it is in the second largest place but in the global level it is at the 15th position so worldwide export in the the products whatever which has been produced in our country the worldwide exports the secondary and higher processed processed fruits are growing at 5.6% while the unprocessed and the primary fruits which are growing it is of 1 to 3% so the processed uh, the preserved fruits are higher you know, it is growing in its export level so the processing sector is blooming like anything throughout the world and so when we see the uh, importance of startups why this uh, importance of importance is uh, made on the startups particularly in food processing sector it is by means of the various um, uh, things that it is called by means of food processing that is the food preservation see here uh, the food preservation <coughs> which is uh, defined as a process of treating and handling foods in a such a way to stop or slow down the spoilage or prevent any food born illness uh, and also by maintaining the nutritional value the texture and flavor which is uh, for uh, ready for consumption and the next one is food diversification where which will be uh, referring to the different types of interventions which will be improving the supply access consumption and bio efficacy of micronutrient rich food so the food safety which is followed by uh, food diversification which refers to the practices and the conditions uh, that preserve the food quality to prevent contamination any food born illness and uh, when we see about the nutrient retention um, it is by means of the proportion of the nutrients remains in the cooked food in relation to the The nutrients which is present in the original food which has been in the form of raw condition so this and all has to be taken into consideration and also global trade where the exchange of products between the international world from one country to the other country which will be uh, improvising the world economy and uh, <clears throat> the higher market competition will be there where the food processing sector can meet up the global trade and convenience and accessibility uh, anything which has to be uh, reached to any place it should be convenient to any consumers and it, sh it should be an accessible one so this uh, food processing sector it has the main place in convenience food as well as which will which is very accessible to the consumers and uh, the next one is the economic contribution that is this one it uh, contribute to the gdp of the nation especially the food processing sector where uh, the startups has to be initiated it contributes to the gdp of the nation where uh, the value added created through the production of goods it serves the country the, by means of its production the by means of its processing so the gdp of the nation has been 
it can be improved and technology innovation <clears throat> normally this uh, when you see about this um, technology in innovation the creation and application of the improved technology especially in case of the development of any food products by means of value addition and which will be uh, uh, bringing a significant uh, advancements so this and all gives the importance paves the way to the startups in the food processing sector <coughs> And when we see about the uh, global and uh, local market trends, how it has been. This slide shows about the technological advancements, that is the global market trends, lo global as well as local market trends, which is the technological advance advancement which, is, uh, which have we have uh, seen in the previous slide. And uh, whatever the processing food which we are planning, it should promote health and wellness, which should focus on the health and the wellness, and it should be sustainable. It should be sustainable. And uh, so, uh, in the recent days, that is, uh, plant-based alternatives are taking up a catch in case of uh, the food processing sector, which can be used in the start startups, so that the global supply chain can be contributing to the GDP and uh, the consumer preferences also changing where uh, in the fast moving world they are uh, uh, just going for uh, ready to eat food but if a nutritious meal or a nutritious uh, snack has been uh, developed and a uh, startups can be initiated then the preferences the changing preference of the consumers can be met and but all this thing has to be cope up with the government regulations and the standards next slide <clears throat> so when we see this uh, the we have to focus where we have to focus on the global uh, and uh, market local market trends is the local markets has to be local rural markets has to be first identified where we can procure the food items or the <coughs> Uh, the ingredients which is which can be used uh, or which can be added in a value addition which can be done as a value addition and this has to be promoted with uh, the needs of the regional urban markets the urban markets has to be focused on and later on the global markets so whatever the, which is available in the rural uh, uh, sorry local rural markets it has to be focused and based on that the urban marketing system has to be identified that is research has to be done before doing any startup and which will be reaching the global markets so the our focus should be from the rural uh, area and then to the urban and then to the uh, global and uh, <coughs> this slide shows the demand for processed food products so when we see about the uh, types of uh, processed food products, especially uh, in the case of uh, startups, how it can be done? It is by means of uh, convenience and uh, time saving food. So in the urbanization and the fast moving world, it uh, <coughs> in the fast moving world, what happens is that <coughs> the time saving uh, value added products are very much mandatory so that that sort of food has to be prepared and uh, food preservation which slide your uh, convenience and time saving And uh, the time has to be saved when we are uh, just going for this sort of uh, foodstuff. When this 
urbanization has been it is increasing where we are uh, the consumers are hunting for uh, uh, the food products which is ready to eat or ready to serve and uh, which is due to this urbanization and as well as expanding of middle class that is uh, the uh, purchasing capacity has been increased by the consumers nowadays uh, where uh, they can use this uh, ready to eat foods and uh, this has to be it there should be improved quality and safety without any uh, issues that is any issues like that of keeping quality so that the consumers will be ready to uh, purchase it and uh, it should be having the increased shelf life and due to the changing work patterns it is nowadays there is a night shift as well as day shift and depending upon the type of work the type of food also changes just by moving on they will be just engulfing the uh, any type of food or uh, just they'll be mixing the food products the uh, uh, powdered products and just they'll be drinking it like that of like that of horlicks and they'll consume and go so this odd sort of food products can be initiated with the uh, startups and the globalization of uh, our uh, palates uh, it is meant as that uh, our palates has undoubtedly influenced by the grocery store wherever we go we search for a new type of taste if it is uh, in a very good way then we'll be again and again going for that particular type of food say for example uh, in the uh, before uh, 10 years in uh, so southern parts of india especially in tamil nadu this pani puri and all it is it is not that much famous it is mainly uh, in urban places especially in cities but nowadays not it is available in rural places also and uh, <coughs> this has been increasing the consumption of pani puri has been increased and uh, everywhere it is going on so from a city it has come to the rural market and we have to think vice versa that whatever any food products which is very much tastier it can be exported so the, we have to think about the globalization of the palettes and uh, innovative product offerings here new products which will be having that is any one product which has various types of nutrients and uh, which will be meeting the nutritional needs a product innovation can be done and this can be helpful in the <coughs> startups next and advantages of startups in uh, food processing sector when you see this advantages it is uh, niche market where uh, uh, we have already spoke about innovations the niche markets it is uh, like that of creating a unique products uh, without any competitions many companies or individuals like to serve many customers on a very particular type of food or a concept say for example wherever you go uh before and all in uh, road side we can see this just i'll say the examples from our local uh, uh, markets itself um wherever we go in tra while traveling we used to see before and all the kumbagonam coffee shops and uh, <coughs> it was a trend and uh, later on nowadays we are seeing that uh, since we are all focusing on uh, health aspect wherever we go now we are seeing karupatti coffee shops so karupatti coffee kada so like that the smaller innovation innovative thinking should be there a niche market a small a single concept has to be identified and we have to work it on and the health and wellness trends so there is a, a growing demand for healthier food options so that accordingly we have to go for this uh, startups and sustainability focus when we see this uh, the sustainability focus it is um, like that of uh, sourcing from the local products or adopting uh, environmental responsible practices like that of uh, developing an eco friendly eco friendly packaging uh, or packing the food items in eco friendly packaging or developing a, an eco friendly packaging system which can be uh, just sold to the <coughs> industries or the other people who are starting startup startups in the uh, product development and uh, the technology integration so here uh, we have to think about the technology where we can use very less finance and uh, 
the overall operations has to be reduced and we have to integrate various technologies and then only the startups will be having an enhanced efficiency and uh, diversification of ingredients when we see about this uh, the diversification of ingredients uh, the here comes the alternative proteins or uh, nowadays they used to sell superfoods say for example uh, the millet uh, recipes millet uh, foods or uh, nowadays called as superfoods and uh, which will be creating a demand for novel as well as the nutritionally rich food products and uh, the uh, e-commerce and uh, where uh, we have to explore the direct to consumer models where we can just uh, uh, go for um, uh, what to say <clears throat> uh, marketing marketing techniques where we can itself directly go and ask for uh, uh, selling of our uh, items whatever we have prepared in our startups so it is reaching a wider audience nowadays this e-commerce say for example it it is by means of social media itself it has been <coughs> reaching a wider audience and uh, the brand itself has been uh, uh, it has been uh, uh, <coughs> famous for uh, a particular type of food and uh, sometimes the traditional retail markets are also available so e-commerce will play a main role in case of startups so that we can promote our products whatever we are preparing or whatever we are trying to sell and uh, the local resourcing and partnership in this uh, uh, the farmers the locally uh, uh, as i have said in the previous uh, slides we have to focus on rural uh, um, produce as well as where we have to think about uh, the <coughs> consumers in the urban area which will be focusing to the global way here we have to build a partnership from the rural as well as the middleman where uh, which is who are in the uh, urban area so that the startups will be having a fresh and high quality ingredients to uh, support the economy local economy especially to the um, people who are starting up this uh, startups and customization and uh, <coughs> personalization so when we see this uh, the ability to offer the customized or personalized food products it is I, as i have said this karupatti coffee so now it is a trend that uh, karupatti it is uh, uh, good for health and coffee it is a refreshing one so that the trend the consumer's trend has to be identified and accordingly the personalized uh, uh, products can be initiated for startups so this are the advantages for startups in food processing sector <clears throat> so changes in the consumer trend so here you can see about uh, uh, the traditional foods which is uh, <clears throat> which is getting the lower uh, uh, view where like that of fresh foods as because the fresh foods we have to get it ready we have to uh, wash it clean it then we have to process it and then we have to cook it so like that it takes various steps and uh, the protein source from meat meat purchasing and uh, cooking time this and all and less transparency we don't know where it has been procured we procured and we we'll, uh, just use it so this traditional products are getting a, a lower uh, focus and the recent trends you can just see wherever we go will be the people will be asking for whether it is natural or uh, whether it is um, <coughs> produced in organic way and uh, they will be checking for a green label wherever we go we also give the awareness that we have to check the labels so snacking evaluation here uh, how we can say it is that wherever we go will be asking for instead of meals we go for some snacks so the snacks which is <coughs> uh now coming upcoming also can be developed by means of the high nutritious concept can be incorporated in that and plant based meat alternative instead of uh, meat we can go for plant based meat say for example soy protein that is uh, tofu which is available in the markets and nowadays uh, many researchers are uh, upcoming by means of uh, pulses various types of pulses and legumes 
this niche alternatives has been developed and the focus is also on uh, functional foods and nutraceuticals where they'll be having the uh, uh, phytochemicals which will be removing the free radicals so that we can be prevented from the com non communicable diseases and mindful eating is the concept which is upcoming now where uh, we have to uh, cut the carbohydrates where we can we have to consume uh, <coughs> uh fruits and vegetables and this fruits and vegetables also which is to be of with uh, uh special nutrients like that it goes on and technology aided nutrition where the value addition has been uh, uh addressed and reduce sugar as well as salt wherever uh, the salt has to be reduced or sugar has to be reduced this sort of uh, trends has been changed from the traditional food uh, to the um, uh, consumption part and the recent trends so accordingly the startups can be <coughs> done and next one is the key trends in the food processing what are the trends uh, nowadays in uh, food processing excuse <coughs> me <coughs> so the key trends nowadays in food processing is that of uh, Uh, precision uh, precision fermentation where uh, it denotes the fermentation process where the microbes which is added to the food products uh, has a, a cell factories which has a high value functional food ingredients for example addition of enzymes or lipids or uh, vitamins or uh, antioxidant additions of antioxidants or preservatives uh, so precision fermentation <coughs> is also it is in the trend and uh, uh, the plant based uh, substitutes they impersonate the test uh, taste and texture of meat in the dairy products as well as in case of tissue in, tissue engineering and as i have said the legumes tofu which has been prepared from uh, soy <coughs> and uh, nowadays the legumes are used for uh, uh, preparing this uh, plant based substitute in the place of meat and <coughs> the upcycled uh, food uh, food which uh, we discuss here it is of uh, the ingredients which is otherwise uh, would have gone to the human consumption that is they are procured and produced using the verifiable supply chains from where we can procure and how it can be utilized in the processing sector and the uh, whatever the waste products or whatever we are getting it from the waste products it will be utilized for uh, some other purpose uh, and it will be used for some other purpose say for example if you are uh, preparing any uh, 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 milk products from the pulses so after uh, um, making it to or extracting the milk the dry products which is available it can be utilized in the packaging material and this can be used which is uh, the environmentally friendly and this is called as upcycled foods so like that the startup can be initiated with the products and the end products uh, which is of which is going as a waste as well as uh, <coughs> which it can be utilized in case of packaging and that also it can be initiated with the second uh, uh, way of startups and uh, uh the next is the uh, uh, smart packaging uh, the same thing which i have said uh, uh, now uh, where uh, the thin packaging which and all uh, where we go for edible cutlery and uh, uh, <coughs> or uh, crockery so that this can be used in the smart packaging and 3d printing 3d printing of food that is uh, uh, this also it is upcoming where uh as we uh, print the photocopies when the of whatever the contents which we are getting in the 
contents can be filled in a material or in an equipment and uh, just by uh, <coughs> touching the machine we'll get the food products which is called as 3d printing of food and the personalized nutrition the personalized nutrition is say for gluten free diet as well as uh, um, <coughs> uh, food which is free from salt so like that we can go for a personalized nutrition and that products can be prepared and it can be uh, involved in the startups and uh, cultured meat and seafood seafood uh, as i have said tissue culturing by means of tissue culturing we can produce uh, meat and uh, uh, seafood so that we can uh, also have a uh, plant based food and blockchain transparency the same thing which i have said with the uh, christian uh, uh, from fermentation as well as upcycled food products and there should be transparency in wherever the procurement or processing as well as in case of packaging the blockchain has to be transparent and algae and seaweed products nowadays it is get, getting more focus <coughs> seaweed products which is of good in nutrients it has been <coughs> nowadays upcoming and this can also be used in the startups <coughs> next slide and uh, the market gap analysis so here uh, how what are the gaps which can be identified and how it can be filled so this uh, the things which i have said in the previous slide which is of uh, plant based convenience meals nowadays we are uh, most of them are uh, switching over to veganism so uh, there is a gap which is existing with the availability of uh, the convenient as well as healthy plant based ready to eat meals and uh, <coughs> in this condition how the startups has to be fill this gra uh, gaps so plant based protein sources can be identified and it can be added in the culinary uh, <coughs> in the processing sector and if, uh, and there are not only nutritious but also it is it will be having a flavor and it should be having uh, uh, an uh, inspiration from the global cuisines it should be similar to that of global cuisines so that it can be done and sustainable packaging the packaging it <coughs> they should be uh, friendly to the environment and uh, so that eco friendly packaging materials can be used uh, which is also a recyclable one can be utilized for uh, this one so that the startups can be uh, initiated with the sustainable packaging and personalized nutrition solution which is an affordable solutions uh, or lack in the markets and uh, so that the technology driven personalized nutrition where uh, the dietitians as well as the nutritionists can come together and they can get the help the uh, the individual who are initiating the startups can also get the uh, <coughs> uh, and discussion or can have a discussion with the nutritionist or the dietitian so that they can have a very good uh, uh, nutritional uh, personalized nutrition solutions and ethnic and authentic cuisine ready meals this and all it is not available much and so that this sort of uh, uh, startups can be done especially the earth, uh, ethnic cuisines can be incorporated with the traditional recipes <clears throat> and uh, the next is the regulatory landscape for uh, food processing where food safety modernization act has to be from uh, followed particularly if you are going with the uh, export quality food products startups which has to be initiated for uh, export quality and european food safety authority regulations has to be followed and codex alimentarius it is an international one which is for <coughs> has to be followed and uh, in our country the fssi has to be followed and uh, gmp standards has to be follow <clears throat> and uh, whenever we are uh, having this uh, startup idea or uh, if you are want to uh, go for any type of uh, packaged items which is to be of global markets 
we have to follow this uh, uh, regulatory <coughs> landscape and uh, with that this uh, labeling regulations has to be followed organic certification standard regulations has to be followed and iso standards are also should be followed in case of this uh, regulatory landscape so <coughs> this Uh, why this uh, we are uh, focusing on this uh, uh, food processing sector it is it is a rising sector not only in our country throughout the world because whatever i have uh, spelled out in the previous slide we are the <coughs> pioneering or uh, we are the largest produ production uh, place of for this fruits and vegetables as well as dairy products so india's food ecosystem it <coughs> offers a great investment as well as opportunities which with a, a stimulating growth in food retail sector which will be encouraging the economic policies with attractive fiscal in incentives and it is done by uh, ministry of food processing industries <coughs> so this uh, mofp i have offered many uh, government schemes which is um, supporting the consumers or the production units to start up uh, uh, to start a food processing uh, uh, <coughs> industry or uh, a food processing unit there are various uh, schemes which is uh, provided by uh, ministry of food processing in the Madam Vice, Vice is not. Okay, sir. Sorry. Ah. So the first one is uh, Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana, where uh, uh, which is helping the farmers and farmer organizations and food processes in the management of uh, post harvest uh, <coughs> loss. as well as the processing of agricultural products and uh, the uh, other one is pradhan mantri formalization of micro food processing enterprises the name itself suggests you it, it says that uh, there is a to enhance the competitiveness of the existing individual micro enterprises that is the self help groups who are uh, uh, in the unorganized segment they are having a smaller uh, units of food processing and to make them into a formal sector they are supporting by this scheme which is of pf uh, sorry pmfme scheme <coughs> and the um, operation greens it is helpful in the supply of key uh, supply of key fruits and vegetables especially to promote the processing <coughs> through farmer producer organization that is the logistics between the production area that is the farmers and to the agri business uh, members and the uh, processing units so the processing facility so this operation greens is uh, also one of the scheme for the stabilizing the supply of keychain uh, keychain in fruits and uh, vegetables and uh, the mega food trucks this and all you would have also come across in each and every headquarters of uh, or in the uh, uh, districts of uh, in some other some of the districts in our state also you can just see the <coughs> mega food parks where it creates the modern infrastructure facilities <coughs> excuse me modern infrastructure facilities for food processing alone 
along with value chain from farm to market from the farm <coughs> that is from the processing area that is the production area up to the processing area that is marketing area as less well to the uh, processing area this mega food box is helpful and uh, <coughs> sorry scheme for integrated cold chain and value addition infrastructure Excuse me. <clears throat> It is helpful in promoting the coal chain infrastructure by for the preservation and transportation of perishable goods. For this, also the scheme is helpful. And uh, <clears throat> setting up or uh, expansion of food processing industries. So to encourage the entrepreneurs uh, to set up the food processing units, or uh, if they are already having any uh, small food processing units, to help them to modernize or to expanding the existing one, these schemes are supporting. So this uh, this are few of the government schemes which is helpful <coughs> to the consumers or, or uh, particularly the people who are willing to take up the startups. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> why uh, we have to um, go for startups and uh, what is the compliance so when we see that consumer trust and reputation is very much important <clears throat> so there should be compliance with the food safety and quality regulations which will be <coughs> uh, may, uh, giving a trust to the consumers so that it enhances the reputation of the startups and the products will be <coughs> <coughs> procured and the market access so when you see about the market access uh Now the markets has to require adherence to the specific regulations for entry. Uh, that is, <clears throat> it should ensure that the startups has to ensure that whether we can access to the various marketing techniques, whether this <clears throat> initial startups can be expanded into markets without any legal bar. This and all has to be identified. And risk mitigation. Here, when you see about this one. we how to comply with the regulations which reduce the risk of the products <coughs> as less well uh, legal action as less well the uh, reputational damage associated with the non compliance so we how to mitigate the risk and investor confidence here <coughs> this is the major point when we are just thinking about the startups they are <coughs> more likely to support the startup that demonstrates the commitment to the compliance and it will be mitigating the potential risk and ensures ensuring the sustainable business model and uh, <coughs> competitive advantage when we see about this one the compliance can be uh, differentiated in the marketplace showcasing the commitment to the quality and safety <coughs> and uh, the next is the legal obligations where this can result in the legal consequences including fine product recalls and even shutdown of some operations so compliance has to be uh, it is very much important and public health and safety so this uh, 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 this has to ensure the health and safety of the consumers and uh, by following the regulatory frameworks particularly in the food processing industry so startups play a crucial role in the food processing industry for uh, several reasons like that of innovation diversification efficiency and technology market competition job creation sustainability regional development consumer choices as well as the export opportunities <coughs> next is the growth sectors where and all 
uh, there is a possibility to start a sec uh, the startups particularly in this field it is <coughs> promoting like anything that is fruits and vegetable processing ready to eat and ready to cook foods as well as marine products particularly and now we see we are getting main focus major focus in uh, uh, production as well as in export and dairy products <coughs> um, and any food which is which will be acting in the place of medicine uh, during covid and all the year have said that of the traditional medicines which has come over and which has helped in the prevention of <coughs> any health issues so uh, the food which is acting as a medicine also it is also taking up a, a lead way and gluten free food as well as uh, uh, veganism this and all has been it is a it is having a <coughs> prominent uh, way for uh, uh, to use it in the startups <coughs> <coughs> Next one. A key elements to startup success. <coughs> Wherever uh, any 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 anything uh, either in not only in the food process se sector, any product which is to be developed or any product which has to be taken as a startup. The idea generation is more important <coughs> and the teamwork here, the teamwork in the means where we can procure or how it can be processed, what equipments and all it can be involved and how and all the processing methods can be done and uh, what will be the output and what will be the regulations for each and every step and until packaging as well as labeling and this and all taken uh, should be taken into consideration and business model should be there. <clears throat> that is telling about uh, the labeling, what is the contents which is in the food, whether it is a ready to eat or whether it has the nutritional content, whether it is <clears throat> plant based food. This and all has to be taken into consideration and funding, particularly <clears throat> funds, whether the level of funding which is utilized in that can be taken <clears throat> back after marketing has to be identified and timing the processing timing or procuring timing or uh, which is get uh, get into the market or into the global venture the timing and all has to be identified and particularly the ranking is the major part when we are just thinking about the key elements to start up success <clears throat> so whether our product will be reaching up because there will be n number of products in the market so we should have a different idea in case of startups and uh, either it can be a value addition or it can be of uh, what i have said that is <coughs> food based food products or uh, gluten free food like that we how to identify and this act as a key element to uh, as to for a success in the startups <coughs> so this uh, slide shows about the case study of uh, two products which is uh, a paper boat uh, wherever uh, you are going in the major cities or as well as in airports or in the railway station we can see about this uh, <coughs> this packaged uh, food product which is of uh, the brand name which is called as uh, paper boat um, it is uh, <coughs> it aims the reviving a traditional indian beverage like that of they will be the advertisement itself it will be given as the taste of raw mango mango fruit can be felt it so it aimed in developing the indian traditional indian beverage either uh, there are number of uh, uh, varieties say for example pomegranate mango <coughs> orange this and all are they by offering this ethnic drinks and this when we are drinking it they used to say that the, the marketing started when we are drinking it it takes over to the the uh, nostalgic event like that of which we can have a raw fruit but the challenges here is balancing the need for traditional flavors the it is produced by means of modern techniques even though the traditional flavors are incorporated this is the challenge and achievements it has gained recognition <coughs> for its approach to the beverage offering and uh, which has connected more people in by means of traditional indian drink 
And the second one is the <coughs> epigamia, which is uh, Greek yogurt, which is uh, available in uh, most of the cities uh, <coughs> with a modern and health conscious twist. Uh, yogurt is available, but Greek yogurt in this particular brand, it is having an innovative flavors and the packaging is very attractive, especially the children used to like it very much because uh, the taste and uh, <coughs> the flavor, it is, it depends upon the type of uh, fruit incorporation in that. So the, uh, there is the challenge is the complexities of the eating industry, that is the, con the product consistency and uh, uh, there are various types of uh, uh, yogurt which is uh, available in the market. So these are the challenges. And <clears throat> it has taken his brand as a health-focused brand, um, attracting investment and expanding its product portfolio. So like this, we can go for uh, <clears throat> the strategies which we can use up in the development of our startups and uh, the challenges can be faced and we have to achieve it when we are starting up <coughs> the any of the startups related with the food processing sector and uh, <coughs> particularly when we are uh, seeing about this uh, funding opportunities so startups can be uh, done by any anybody but uh, even though the government has providing schemes they are uh, having various schemes to support uh, uh, the people who are uh, going to start uh, a venture in uh, any food processing sector. So we itself, that is, there are many funding opportunities where the venture capital, that is, some of the <coughs> people or uh, an organization can give a, a, a pool sum of money and it can be, uh, uh, they can ask the members to start up any uh, thing which they are particularly or ex expert in that <coughs> and government grants and subsidies and uh, the schemes are available the governments uh, they are uh, providing uh, grants and subsidies are given uh, in the production area that is if you are procuring from uh, the local rural market in some of the industry uh, schemes the government schemes are giving uh, subsidies and crowdfunding a uh, number of members who are uh, like-minded person, they can come together and put their fund together and they can initiate the startups and uh, angel investors. <coughs> Here the angel investors is we. <coughs> if you are, if I am planning to con uh, start a uh, uh, food processing unit, I can put my own money and I can start it. That is angel investors. We have to utilize our amount and we can start a, um, a processing unit in a particular uh, sector that is uh, either in a fruit processing or in a vegetable processing or in dairy processing and blank, bank loans as you know bank uh, provides finance and uh, financial institutions uh, various financial institutions are there and they also produce finance for uh, uh, initiating the startups and uh, corporate partnership and strategic alliances here many of the corporate industries they provide loans for uh, <coughs> starting uh, any uh, uh, startups in food processing sector, sector and uh, accelerators and incubators. The initiation has to be done by uh, any incubating centers. Uh, it, it is under uh, many of the uh, educational institutions or uh, say for example, um, they will be giving training uh, and uh, they will be helping us to analyze the food stuff say for example, which is <clears throat> um, the Riftum, which is there in uh, Tanjur. Um, so the incubators supports the people by helping them to train them as well as <clears throat> to help them to analyze the, the products or uh, which is also helpful in the marketing also. So there are uh, fun this are the funding opportunities which is available uh, to the people who are uh, having an uh, uh, ambition to start this uh, startups particularly in the food processing sector <coughs> so challenges and risk we have to think about the regulatory compliances 
and uh, supply chain disruptions uh, <coughs> uh, disturbances we have to check for uh, where can we can procure this and all has to be identified the standards has to be identified <coughs> quality control has to be checked and uh, branding uh, branding of that particular product has to be done and uh, in that they may be getting any uh, any uh, issues and capital constraints sometimes financial constraints may be there and uh, nowadays <coughs> we the people the consumers their preferences changes continuously one day they will be just going for uh, some plant based meal and later on they will be switching over to the normal uh, regular meat so the consumer uh, preferences are changing so that is also a, a challenge and technological integration <coughs> sometimes the technology integration it promotes sometimes it also uh, make into a trouble so there are challenges in any startup if you are doing there are challenges and this the so the regulatory uh, mechanism has to be followed <coughs> and uh, the future uh, innovative tech, this, some of the things which I have uh, uh, given in the slide is uh, future cutting edge innovative technologies and food processing. That is uh, in the previous uh, <coughs> few slides, I have said uh, smart packaging solutions, that is biodegradable, which is environmental friendly packaging, can be developed and it can be nowadays global market is receiving <coughs> uh, this. Uh, uh, biodegradable packaging materials and uh, this uh, artificial intelligence and quality control uh, in uh, maintaining the regulations in the food products. So this and all are uh, gaining uh, <coughs> more uh, need or focus and uh, food processing techniques. So this and all has to be taken care and uh, this food processing sector startup are having vast and promising uh, scope in the near future to meet the uh, um, <clears throat> global needs as well as to the needs of the population in our country itself. So startups which is done with the food processing sector will never go in vain and uh, uh, anybody can start this um, uh, startups, particularly in the food processing sector, where there is more sc scope. <coughs> so to conclude, uh, before initiating any startups, we are having uh, ideas or we are having uh, schemes which provide uh, finance. There are uh, regulations, regulatory agencies, which helps us in uh, getting the regulations. Uh, but market research and well-defined business strategy it is very much important which is <clears throat> essential for the success of uh, any startups in the food processing sector so we have to focus on market research and well-defined business strategy so that uh, we can fulfill the needs of the global market uh, any <clears throat> thank you any queries i'm ready to answer Thank you. Any questions you can raise? Participants? Madam, almost uh, no questions. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you have given a very elaborate and excellent lecture, madam, uh, covering all the aspects. Uh, the the young and the budding startup uh, want to know uh, that uh, the food processing sector is one of the uh, biggest growing market. Uh, several uh, uh, even technology uh, is helping us in many ways. Several YouTubers also nowadays they are well utilizing uh, this kind of avenues for their uh, career and future growth. So we appeal every participants. Uh, uh, we hope that this lecture uh, has stimulated you uh, some uh, innovative uh, uh, startup uh, initiatives <coughs> from you. Kindly utilize uh, this kind of uh, the lectures. And if you any questions also, you can email to our resource person. She will uh, clarify your queries. 
we thank every one of you especially the the resource person uh, who is uh, having a busy schedule uh, in spite of that uh, she has immediately concentrated when i uh, uh, made a call uh, to the professor madam uh, i uh, i especially uh, extend my heartfelt thanks to you madam for sparing your valuable time with us and uh, delivering this uh, uh, lecture to, in the webinar we thank you madam uh, for your entire team members we also extend thanks to our staff members study center functionaries and our esteemed learners those who have participated in this <coughs> online webinar and making this event a success thank you thank you one and all for participation in this thank you thank you sir pleasure is mine sir uh, thank, you. thank you very much yes sir